Greetings everybody, I would like to start showing you what I have in the pipeline for my next build. Arch Mini is almost done. I complete all hardware installation, just would like to run some performance benchmark and see how system is get cooled uh, with what I built. So it's not just visuals, but to get some practical out of it. So I accumulated quite a few sponsorship items by now and I uh, haven't had a, even a chance to review them so I start, will start showing you parts that I got from Gigabyte, Lanly and um, other sponsors and today I'd like to look at a Gigabyte board that I received almost two months ago quite ashamed and haven't had a chance to look at it it's uh, G1 Assassin 2 LJ2011 type of motherboard uh, very similar in some ways to Stalin Sniper build that I had on X58 system and um, let's have a look uh, I wouldn't do like full unboxing because by now everybody knows what it is and it was quite a few videos already on YouTube and um, on the websites but I'd like to offer you a few thoughts that um, I just personally like or dislike about this board and hopefully you'll find it somewhat entertainment in the process so, we have a box pretty much the same as it was with um, my G1 Sniper. You can see that uh, design, the same consumer-oriented gaming type of um, packaging, look like uh, military stuff. They ch changed a little bit of color of the, of the box. Other than that, it's very much similar type of setup. Inside of the packaging, um, I usually don't even talk about it because you're pretty much getting the same stuff all the time. Books, CDs, SATA cables, things like this. Um, maybe some goodies like posters and uh, stickers. But this particular packaging is slightly different in a way from uh, I've seen so far, so I'd like to stop and give you a couple notes on that matter. One thing that I really like, and actually I provide feedback to Gigabyte, and I don't know if they listen to me or it just uh, was a coincidence. Uh, one thing that I don't like when manufacturers provide you IO shield for the back of your case with some weird colors white or gray. Um, like anything but black so most people using black cases so you have this weird kind of um, eye shield which spoil the looks it's not like you look on the back of the case all the time but you know if you if you have such a case that or a situation when you look on this thing it's better to have it black and actually giveaway did it this time so it's uh, big props for that secondly um, also quite often you get your SLI or Crossfire Bridge really weird colors too, like brown. I understand that probably it's a traditional color, cheapest color to produce, but come on, if you if you give a $300 motherboard, why don't make it kind of black as it, most people want. So here actually they did it as well, so that I like because I don't need to put any masking tape on top of it or anything like this. So this is pretty good. So let me get rid of all this usual stuff. One thing that um, not like I, I need it, but kind of nice touch for the packaging that they decide to provide wireless card for this board. So if you want a wireless connection, you actually have like freebie here, or you can sell it if you don't need it. Um, I think the another manufacturer who did it a while ago was Asus. I think it was some sort of like deluxe package when you had a wireless card package with your motherboard and um, I remember having one of those maybe three or four years ago. So um, so idea is not new but free stuff is free stuff which is nice and you have antenna as well. Set the cables black which is not bad idea because sometimes you get really like red or blue and if you don't make a blue case again what's the point. And the last thing that it's it's not new for this package because I already have it with uh, my sniper box. I also uh, they provide this uh, SATA 3 
a kind of bracket that can be uh, put in front of the case. It's very nice because some cases you have really weird kind of placement for um, your USB USB cables. I think I said SATA before, but no mind. So USB cables, and um, you need to open some sort of drawer, or it's on the top, like on my uh, this Arc Mini case. We can show you actually. Pretty heavy. So Arc Mini, you have a connection on the top, and I don't really like it because you kind of go like this. Um, so I prefer to have connection in the front of the case. So basically, this additional option can give you extra ports there. So enough talk on this point. A few good goodies, and um, this is not a bad packaging, I would say, in general. Because mostly, often you get some stuff that you don't really need. Okay, and have to buy something else. So let's look on the board itself. Similar package in a window type of box. All right, I, I repositioning my setup a little bit so we can have a better view on my second camera over there for the close-ups. So again, not going to go through the all bells and whistles of the motherboard. As by now, everybody knows what this is about. Few comments. You have only three slots for graphical cards, and only two of them 16 speed, so more than dual card probably make not much sense here. But for majority of the people, it's probably tops. Anyways, and uh, probably more than half running one card at all. Uh, other stuff, the same your creative labs, uh, high definition audio, your fancy network interface card, which doesn't seem to make any difference for your ping when you're gaming, but it's got kind of nice uh, or interesting package software that you can play with your application you would like to prioritize within your computer, and um, it's kind of fun, so it doesn't hurt to have it, you can't complain too much. On the back, not many difference either. Uh, similar set of uh, connectors, except one extra button. With um, Sniper 1, I have only overclocking button, that's it. Here you have uh, another button that allows you to switch between two um, biases that you can uh, remember with this board. One thing that I would like to kind of make a little around here, if you remember, I said that Sniper with this uh, rounds clip heatsink, it's kind of cheesy, but if people like it, fine. And But I'm not sure if it will work well. And you know, guess what? It actually doesn't work well. Uh, my board is so damn hot that when I touch it with my hand, when I, let's say, render a video or do some other heavy task on my computer, you can burn your fingers, literally. So what I did, I actually took a few heatsinks from a really old server and um, I put them right on this um, toy uh, heat thingy and actually it started giving me a little bit better result because I started get some heat dissipation. I hope that X79 kind of give you a little bit uh, lower heat output, but again, I'm pretty sure that this pistol maybe get a, some people are really excited and uh, train this kind of feel, but as a heat sinks, it's really junk. Um, anyways, I think on the other side it might sparkle. People who want to water cool, to put um, cover blocks on this motherboard for additional fun, so it's got kind of additional incentive to run it, as a board potentially can run pretty hot. Other than that, I would like to talk to you only about water cooling aspect of this board. First of all, just speaking about X79 board in general. So what we have here is a totally new layout. We used to have CPU in one area, memory banks on the, on the side. Right now, with all boards you, we have, you have a CPU in the middle and you have two banks on the side. This board actually have only 
two pairs of memory stick on each side so it's uh, not as cool maybe from my perspective because if I want to use computer for again for video rendering or something like this I prefer to have a little bit more memory so four banks on each side would be more preferable but again for majority of people probably doesn't really matter four will do but anyways what I'm going to, to tell you is that this kind of layout actually spells extra expense for water cooling enthusiasts why because cost of the blocks more or less the same if you notice that block for ram for six sticks is just a few bucks more expensive than four sticks or even two sticks so basically if you used to need to spend maybe about 60 dollars to water cool your six memory modules or four memory modules now you have to have two slightly less expensive blocks which will cost you probably 50 each or even 40 each but again it's more money secondly the location of all those blocks if you decide to go water cooling with memory is really close so you have a cpu block in the middle and two blocks very close with total of six inlet outlets and speaking from experience anything that's very cramped in little space is always big pain because it's difficult to level them up first of all because CPU probably will be lower when the memory sticks will be higher with block so you will need to go kind of down then go up and all the zigzag kind of connections that you need to figure out it's absolutely not obvious I'm pretty sure some people already solved this puzzle but this is a kind of additional difficulties that you have to deal when you go for x79 um, platform altogether and speaking about overheating motherboard potentially if you will add MOSFET block and your South or Northbridge block on the bottom that will give you another four connections and then I think the entire water cooled board will might look pretty messy um, the board blocks are not available at this point so it's not an issue and not everybody water cooling rams sticks but if you do it can be quite complicated another thing that i'd like to mention specifically for water cooling if you use dual gpu type of setup on this board your slots is first and third so you basically have 16 slots you will skipping a few slots down so uh, in a way it's easier why because when you have a big distance between cards you actually can run just piece of tube and it um, can be much cheaper proposition or it might look better um, if you're just using fitting a tube if you're going with a fancy kind of SLI or crossfire type of um, multi GPU links from AK or water cool any of those then you need to make sure that the type of the connection can support like three slots between not not next to each other so maybe not obvious right away but that's something that you need to keep in mind when you build it up so far the few items that i also a little bit missing since my orange build unfortunately no power button on the motherboard at all uh, no buttons to overclock it you only one on the bottom so it's not really overclocking board it's more like a i guess a gaming board uh, but um, could be nice to have it but it's not part of this specific board if you want something like this i probably need to go ud7 which is another board by gigabyte with orange color and it's more oriented on overclockers needs that's pretty much it enough talking about this board just looking forward to get going i already have my cpu purchase for this card I oh, suppose this with this board and also have a two GTX 680 coming in. I haven't decided which kind of blocks I will be using either AK or coolants uh, because of the just easy availability. And um, I will show you in next video about this new build, what kind of case I probably will plan to use it. And this is sponsored by Lian Li. Quite unusual thing. So I'm not sure how it will turn out, but we'll, we'll, we'll decide on that later. So thank you very much for watching. 
that was a video review of Gigabyte G1 Killer X79 motherboard and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. See you soon.